Real life stories. Common stories that we hear from our neighbors or family. Maybe our own lives. We don't have to look far tonight to find some difficulty. We don't have to look far tonight to find someone facing circumstances and situations that seem insurmountable. Find that we can find darkness in some form or the other anywhere you look. Christmas is a very complicated time. Very complicated time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. At least that's what the song says. But, but, but what the song says and what's going on around me sometimes is completely different. See, it, see, Christmas is not really based on my happenings. It's based on what happened. Because see, all my world could be falling apart. But my life is anchored in something that happened 2,000 years ago. Light came. Hope came. Jesus, the light of the world, came. So what's happening or going to be happening in the next few days is not where your identity lies. It's not where your destiny lies. It's not going to determine how your Christmas is going to be. Why? Because I'm not anchored in my happenings. I'm anchored in what happened 2,000 years ago. So this season's not really based on the stress, the madness of going house to house. Is anybody ready for that? Strange schedules, maybe the loneliness and sadness that tries to fill some of our lives. The things that try to steal our peace and joy. My life is anchored in what has happened. Many people are living in darkness today. In Matthew chapter 4, we'll put it up on the screen. Verse 16, it says this. The people who sat in darkness have seen what? Come on, help me preach. Great light. Not just small light, but what? Great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. So to know how great a light is, you really have to know how great the darkness is. Because see, light really makes no sense in light. Light really makes no sense in light. Light only makes sense in darkness. That's why the prophet wrote in Isaiah 60, Arise, shine. For thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth. And what? Gross darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Light only makes sense when there's darkness. I can remember. Catherine will remember this. I remember one time I had my first experience with utter black darkness. And it was on 18 Mile Creek with Pastor, out to Pastor Jim's house. You know how you wake up in the middle of the night and you know, you're just confused? And When well, you live out in the country, there's no light. Now, I'm from Eleanor, the Badlands, the Badlands of Eleanor. Right there. It's the west side of Eleanor. Tommy always said he's from the west side. That's he's, it's what he said, I'm the west side. I'm from the west side. But I can remember waking up one night and out there you could not see your hand in front of your face. Remember that, Kath? <laughs> and I woke up and the only thing I could see was the flashing of the VCR going, it's all I could see. The, the, the number, you know what I'm saying? The flashing, whatever it was, at the, the, the time or the timer on, it's all I could see. And I was so disoriented, discombobulated. I mean, I was, I mean, I was fit to be tied. I started screaming, did I not? utter blackness I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face and that's where fear sets in is in darkness nobody's scared of the light are you with me here the Bible says the people who sat in darkness now what's interesting Isaiah 9 put this one up on the board up on the screen. Isaiah 9, this is the prophet. Listen to what he says. The people who what? Walked in darkness. Seen a great light. So through history, the prophet said they were walking in darkness. 
But over there in Matthew 4, when Jesus came, the people went from walking and they'd already went to what? See, when you're walking, at least you may end up coming to some light sometime. But when you have sat and, you're, and, you're, and there is no movement, it's utter hopelessness and, and chaos is around you and you're not moving and you're not coming out of that. So over history and time, there was, there was more darkness and more darkness and more darkness and more darkness and more darkness. Disease, destruction, destitution, darkness is a part of the world we live in. Tonight your darkness could be being crippled by fear. Tonight your darkness may be a medical issue. Tonight your, your darkness may be family problems. Tonight your darkness may be the loss of a job. Tonight your, your, your darkness may be discouragement or an unanswered question about life or an unanswered prayer. Depression could be your darkness tonight. People stumbling tonight everywhere and groping for help and groping for security, looking for something. Because when you got darkness, it's a place where situations never change. It says they were sitting in darkness. They were never, it was never changing. It was a place where no, there's no answer. There's no, listen, in darkness, there's no answer for cancer. In darkness. In, in darkness, in, in, in darkness, there, there's no answer for the confusion and the chaos that you and I are a part of in this, life, in this world. It, it, it's in darkness. You know what darkness is? It's the absence of light. That's a real good definition of hell, actually. It's an absence of life. An absence of light. 1 John 1, 5, it says, God is light. And in him there's no darkness at all. So anything that's associated with darkness is not associated with God. So anything that's associated with darkness is not associated with God. John 10.10, 10, right? The thief cometh not but for to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus came to bring light. That's where Satan lives. Satan lives in darkness. So light and darkness in Scripture... Or it's contrasted all the way through. It's a type. It's a symbol. Darkness, sin, death, destruction, light, God's life, hope, victory. It's the exact opposite of anything dark is what light is. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, he said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has light with what? Darkness. Light with darkness. And you've been called to light. For you a chosen generation. 1 Peter 2, 9. For you are a what? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Right? A holy nation. His own special people. What for? That you may proclaim the praise of him that called you out of darkness. And what? Into the light. So everybody, every person, every person, all people has been called. There's a calling on their life. Come to the light. Come to the light. That's the call that we have on our life. It's to come to light. You were never made for darkness. You were never made for darkness. How can you say that, Pastor Paul? Listen, your very bodies are dependent on sunlight. If you don't get sunlight, there's a thing in your body called what? Vitamin D. And they have linked vitamin D deficiency to all kinds of different uh, maladies and, and diseases and all that. Because why? Your body was made for light. Take a campfire. How many people like to have, sit around a campfire? Isn't there something about a campfire? You're just like drawn to it. Just staring right into the light. Why? Because you're made for light. You're made for it. Matter of fact, you'll spend hundreds of dollars just to light your house. You'll have a lighting specialist come to your house. When you're building a house, you'll have a lighting guy come. 
And they'll go and they'll say, well, I think we need the cans here, need the cans here, need the cans there. I think you need this type of this type of light here, this type of light here. And you've got all this natural light, so this type of light will be good here. You are made for light. Plants are dependent on light. Production, reproduction in plants and the whole synthesis, whatever that stuff's called, right? Photosynthesis. Light. It's dependent on light. Our whole world's... Because why? We were never made for darkness. We were only made for light. And what was God's answer? In the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. We have... What we got going on here? There's, there's, there's the, 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 the earth is without form, tohu, confusion, chaos, form and void, empty of resources. No resources and darkness. That's where the enemy wants all of our lives chaos, confusion, a lack of resources, and you know what? Just utter darkness. What do you mean, Pastor Paul? You may, be given a, you may be given a report. There's nothing else that we can do for you. It's a lack of resources. In the natural, you lost your job. You can't find another job. That's a lack of resources. It's the same spot that God found himself in in Genesis chapter 1. The earth was without form. Was void. Bohu. Lack of resources and darkness. But thank God for verse 3. And God said, aren't you glad that God always has a final word in your life? And God said what? God's answer to every problem is what? That's why Jesus is known as the great light. Light is essential. I can remember, man, I'm telling you one thing. I can remember down to uh, Buffalo, down here, and Brian will remember this. I mean, there was cockroaches that big down there in that, in that uh, dressing room. Was there not, Brian? I mean, they smoked cigarettes. Those things did. <laughs> I'm being serious. They were crazy. And me and Brian and Brian, Brian Nall and Brian Hinkle, we, we, we'd go in. We'd always early, weren't we? Remember, always early. So we went down there, and you go in there, and we was throwing our stuff. We always play, play ball. I mean, that's all you done. That's all I done. Went in there in the dressing room, turned the lights on, and they just scurry. <laughs> because they don't like the light. That's where the devil operates. He operates in darkness. That's why God's trying to get you to come to the, come to the light. Amen. Now, notice it's a great light. Remember in Matthew 4? They, the people that sat in darkness, they saw a what? Mega light. Mag light. Mega light. Powerful. That's what that word means in the Greek. Big, huge, powerful. Mega light. Powerful light. I mean, no wonder there was, there was so much. So much celebration at the birth of Jesus. No wonder there was exceeding, there was great joy. Isn't that interesting, right? The, the, the shepherds, or the, the, the angels appeared to the shepherds. I'm bringing you great, glad tidings or great or good tidings of what? Because great light always produces great joy. Man, what's great joy look like? I don't think it looks like this. This is the day. This is. I think great joy. Looks like spinning and dancing and shouting and running around a building. That's what great joy looks like to me. Someone that's totally and free. Why? Because of light. All because of light. All because of light. Luke chapter 1. Let me show you this real quick. You guys all right? I'm hot. You guys hot? Hey, I've got some agreement. 
I really tried to get it cold in here since it was 70 outside. I thought I'd try to make it like the winter wonderland at least. Luke chapter 1, look what it says up here. You guys all right? Yeah. All right. Now, this is John the Baptist. Uh, uh, Zacharias is actually prophesying about what John the Baptist was going to do and, and how he was going to go and prepare the way of the Lord. And this is how the angel or the, uh, Zachariah prophesied about Jesus. And you, child, he's talking, about, he's talking here about John the Baptist. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of God with which the what? The day spring from on high has visited us. Verse uh, 79. To give what? This day spring that's going to come. He's going to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Now stay here with me a second. To give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death. Now if you look in verse 78, he calls them the day spring. What is the word day spring? What does that mean? It's the very, the, the word day spring is actually the breaking of the day. It's, it's the first sign of light. It's, it's the first appearance of light. So all of a sudden we saw that this Isaiah said that they were, they were walking in darkness and all of a sudden in Matthew it says they were sitting in darkness and in this scripture in Luke it says they were sitting in darkness but there's a day spring, the first light that's coming. He is the first light. He is the only light. The day spring began to go and begin to shed light on all of humanity. I love it. It says right here this light is going to come and it's going to guide our feet into the what? Shalom. That all-inclusive word, shalom. I love it. Wholeness, harmony, security, well-being, prosperity, inner tranquility, untroubled, freedom from strife, freedom from fear and torment, to bring order out of chaos and to bring broken pieces together. That all-inclusive word. He said, this Messiah is going to come. He's going to be the day spring. He's going to shed light on all of humanity. It's going to lead us into, going to lead our feet right into the path of wholeness. King, where are you? He's on the scene. And no matter what you're facing in your life, the king is here. The light is here. The light, the light has come. And it's not going away. Come on, somebody. The light, the light. Now again, who was this for? Who, 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 was this, who was this light for? Those that were what? Setting in darkness. Setting in darkness. Look what it says over here in John 8, 12. <clears throat> Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the what? He identifies himself. I'm the what? I'm the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in, but shall have the what? He said, if you'll just come follow me, come to the light. You won't have to walk in darkness anymore. You don't have to be lonely anymore. Come on. In the middle of your trial and circumstance, you can have peace. God's given you faith to speak to mountains. and to, Listen, that's what I'm talking about. That's why he said, come and follow me. I'll show you how to get it done. I'll show you how to speak to mountains. I'll show you how to step out on bows of boat and speak to the winds and speak to the waves. Be still. I'll show you. That's the problem. We got a lot of people that have the light of the world in them, but not the light of the word in them. I was trying to write that one down. That's the problem. We have a whole church, a whole body of people that has the light of the world in them. But they don't have the light of the word. See, one will get you to heaven. The other one will bring heaven to earth. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. One will get you to heaven. And I'm not minimizing that. But the other one will actually start bringing heaven down to earth. 
Am, am I making sense to you guys? Jesus said, just come follow me. Well, I got to work it all out. Don't try to work it out. Just come to the light. The light will fix it. The light will fix it. <clears throat> we got people like it all the time. Well, I got to work it out. I got to quit this. I got to quit that. I got to quit this. I got to quit that. I got to quit this. I got to quit that. And then I'll come to Jesus. Are you serious? You need the light, man. Just come to the light. Come to the light. So what happens is you go from sitting in darkness to walking in the light. Walking in destiny. Walking in purpose. Are you saying, Pastor Paul, that nothing bad ever happens? No, listen. We're part of a fallen world. Come on. God's given us light. That way we can walk in the midst of these circumstances and begin to release light out into the world because when light comes, darkness has to go. Darkness has to flee. Notice he said, he said, I'll come to give, give light, giving light to those that sit in darkness. You've got you to take it. Listen, you can be headed, sitting in here in this room, you can be completely blind, and I hand you a light. You've got to turn the light on. You gotta turn it on. I'm making sense to you guys. Look at this. I love John. I love John's gospel for a lot of different reasons, but let, let me just, just just listen to this a second. John was the last living apostle of the Lamb. Last one. The book was wrote around 90, mid 90s, theologians say mid 90s, 90 AD, 95 AD. All this, all, listen, all the rest of them have been, all the rest of the apostles, and this is the, we still have apostles today. This is the original apostles of the Lamb. Right? They'd all, they'd all been, uh, been per, uh, they was persecuted and they were killed for their faith and they died. Some were burnt and some were crucified. Up, Peter was crucified upside down, uh, history says. This was a man, John, that they, they, they put him in a, in, a, in a vat of boiling oil. And when they pulled him out, he wasn't even scathed. He was banned to an alum called Patmos. So they couldn't kill him in a vat of oil. But he still made it. He was the only one that did not die from martyrdom. Now let me ask you guys a question. All you scholars. What was Jesus' last words to John? Behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. He took care of. They went to Ephesus. That was where his home was at. It was in Ephesus. He took care. That's where Mary died was Ephesus. And, he, and John took care of Mary. The mother of Jesus. Now could you imagine him having a bowl of soup and a sandwich. And sitting down at the table. Now tell me that story again. How did that happen with that angel again? You mean, and what was that ride like to Bethlehem while you were nine months? Mama, tell me about this story again. But isn't it interesting? Because in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all talk about the birth of Jesus. But John... If I was writing the book, wouldn't you start out from the beginning? I mean, you had the mother of Jesus here. And, and, and she told the story to you time after time. How many, how many times have you heard the story? Wouldn't you be writing about it? But that's not the way that he starts his book. He starts his book talking about the significance of the birth and what was the byproduct of the birth. He actually goes back farther. There was no birth which Jesus has always been. But look what he says in John 1.14. So the word became human. This is the new living. And made his home among us. And he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. The word became what? Human or flesh. And he made his home among us. He lived among us. Jesus in a manger. God. Became man. 
And then he goes, and we'll go back to verse 1 now. In the beginning was the Word. Or in the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Verse 2. He existed in the beginning with God. Verse 3. God created everything through Him and nothing was created except through Him. Verse 4. The Word gave life to everything that was created and His life brought what? Brought what? Life. To who? Everyone. Everybody's been called to light. Whosoever. Come. Because you've been called to what? Light. And his life brought light to everyone. Verse 5. Brace yourself now. Don't run. You got lights. Candles. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can <coughs> extinguish it ever. They sat in darkness. They were walking in darkness. History began to unfold itself. And all of a sudden people became more hopeless and more hopeless and more hopeless. And, he sat, and it said they sat in darkness, utter hopelessness. They weren't moving. Nobody was budging. But the day star. Come on. The breaking of the dawn. The very beginning. The, the, the first appearance of life came. And that life. And that light came. And this, this is why the devil hated this. This is why he tried to kill him. That's why he, he had fired Herod to go and try to kill all the baby boys. Why? He was trying to put out the light. Light. light connect, listen. Darkness. Light always overcomes darkness. I don't care what you're facing today. I want you to know something. The light of the world lives on the inside of you. And when you walk in, listen, light just showed up. Light just showed up. Light just showed up. Come on. Hallelujah. John said, in spite of everything I've experienced, in spite of everything I've saw, in spite of I saw all my friends crucified or, or, or martyred for their faith and, and, and killed and burned. And he would say he was, his house was on the top of the hill at Ephesus. And no doubt there was a big, huge, if you go and study the history, there was a huge uh, a coliseum that sat in Ephesus. No doubt there was many of his friends that were inside of that coliseum or inside of that arena that were being eaten by lions. He said, beside of everything that I'm experiencing, the light can never be extinguished ever you could sit here and see him saying that and not just the people but to proclaim to every principality and power every demonic force that you will never ever win the light will never be extinguished ever 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 ever, ever. So the light has come. Let me give you three quick things. Three realities of this. Number one, why has the light come? Number one is to reveal God to us. That's the first reason for light. What? To reveal God to us. To reveal God to us. Jesus was the will of God in motion. The light came so we could see what the Father's like. We can never, listen, if you want to know what, you want to know what God's life like, just look to Jesus. He's the ta-da. Ta-da. He's the ta-da God. I'm here. Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. The light came to reveal to all humanity this word that became flesh was full of grace and full of truth. Not just law, but grace. Come on. He was full of grace and truth. He was the ta-da. I'm coming on the scene. Put the spotlight on me. If you want to know what the Father looks like, just look to me. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Colossians 1.15, He's the image of the invisible God. The image of the invisible God. 
the, he, the Greek word aku. We get our word icon from it. When you push an icon on your phone, everything that's inside that app opens up. Come on. When you push Jesus, everything of the Father opens up. He is the image, the aku, the icon. The very, the, 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 the Greek means the exact representation of the invisible God. The exact representation of of the Father. John 1.18 says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. He's, it, says, it says this Son's in the what? In the bosom. See, Jesus reveals the heart of the Father. It says here that, that He has declared Him. Exegetomai. It means to actually interpret, exegete. When you exegete something, you interpret it, you pull it out, you break it all down. That's what this word declared means. He said, he said listen, that no one's seen God, seen God, John said, no one's seen God in any time. But this, this icon, this, this Jesus that has come, listen, he is declaring them. He's exegeting, he is inter- interpreting exactly what the Father is like. The light has come first and foremost to reveal the Father to us. And the Bible says God is light, and in Him there is no what? Darkness at all. Amen? Number two, it reminds me that God is for me. Let me light that real quick. It reminds me that God is for me, He's for us, and He's with us. The light came to show you and I that, 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 that God is, 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 is with me. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. That's what Isaiah prophesied. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And, his, and you shall call his name what? Emmanuel. God what? With us. He, he's never going to leave you. And no matter what, listen, no matter where you're at tonight or what's going on in your life, I want you to know something, that God is always with you. The light has come to reveal to you that He's never leaving. He's always here. The light is in us now. The light is with us now. He's for us, not against us. Amen. You know, the Christian life is about a transformed life. Stay with me. I'm getting ready to close in a minute. It's about a transformed life. It's not about just taking you to heaven. Come on. It's more than that. He is with us. And if he's with me, Hudge, I'll guarantee you he's for me, he's with me. I'll guarantee you if he's with me, he's working on me. I'll guarantee you if God is with you, and he is, he's working on you. Because the Holy Spirit's job is to make you look like Jesus. That way we can be a better reflection, a better representation of Him. That's why we're here tonight. Why did we come here tonight? Not just to sing some song. We're coming here, why? To stir one another up to love and to good works. That way you and I, when we walk out of the place, that we can look more like Jesus. Amen. That's why you're here. That's why we're here. To be transformed through the renewing of our mind. The Word of God, the Bible says the entrance of the Word gives light, right? The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a what? A light unto my path. When God starts working on you, He starts shining in areas of your life. Oh, no, no, no. See, this is why I'm talking about holiness. See, see, He gets the light down here. He starts revealing the cobwebs in the corners. And I need you to, ch- when the Holy Spirit comes to you, he's never there to condemn you. He's there to convict you and convince you that, listen, this is not who you are. So when you get the light starts shining on you, and all of a sudden the Lord starts dealing with you, with you about an issue, it's not because he hates you. He loves you, and he's trying to transform you. And listen, if he's dealing with something in your life, I promise there's a grace there to go and cause that thing to be transformed. 
He's with me. And if he's with me, he's working. He's working in me. He's working. He's still working on me. To make me what I ought to be. That's the truth. He's still working on me. I'm not, he's not finished with me yet. Aren't you glad? Look at your neighbor and say, he's not finished with you. He is not finished with you yet. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? For it's God, Philippians chapter 2. For it's God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's God that's producing a desire in you to change. You can't change without him anyway. People try that all the time. It's called fad diets. Anybody else going on one at the first of the year? But listen, that's what we try to do all the time. We try to go and change stuff without Holy Spirit. It don't work that way, man. Listen, if you'll give him your heart and you'll let him work, he'll change your marriage. He'll change your life. He'll change your mouth. Come on. He'll change you. Because if he's with me, and he is, the lights come to reveal to me who Jesus the Father is. He's come to tell me and remind me that I'm always with you. That darkness does not have to prevail in your life. God never makes you do anything. All he needs is a yes. That's it. Mary, Mary, highly favored. You're going to have a son. What did she say? It's the yes of the Lord. Are you with me here? See, the word, the word is, is equated to a sharp two-edged sword. It's, it's equated to a sharp two-edged sword. The Bible says we're to rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide. Orthotomateros. It means to cut straight. Not to hack, but to, but, but to cut straight, a scalpel. I mean, let me show you a scripture real quick. This is what the word does. Uh, go here, uh, 2 Timothy 2. Look it up on the board. I'm just about done. I have my second closing. It's Christmas. Amen. Can I not have a Christmas present and preach all night? Can we just do that tonight? <laughs> hey, come on. I, I, some people would stay. I know that. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Did I give you that one? Okay, 2.15, I think it is. Yeah, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be, to shame, be ashamed, rightly dividing, orthotomateros, which means to cut straight or sharp the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more darkness, ungodliness. Look what it says in verse 17. And their message will spread like a what? Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort. The word of God will cut the cancers out of your life. The scalpel. Listen, I, I worked in surgery. I understand this. You never operated with a dull scalpel. The, knock, the doctor would punch you out. You never operate with it. You always had a sharp knife. Because you start hacking away at something, you will cause more damage. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it cuts the things out of our life that doesn't need to be there. See, you know why God hates sin? Because he hates to see you destroyed. You've been called to better than that. You've been called to light and not darkness. That's not who you've been called to be. There's operating in that is dark. He hates to see his children. You've been called to operate in light. God is with me. God is for me. He's working in me. And the final thing is this. The third and final thing. What is it done? Why has the light come? It's come so it can radiate 
can radiate through us. It can radiate through us. I want the ushers to come real quick. I'm going to go ahead and start lighting these cameras or candles. Keep your cameras out. They're going to light them back here. I'll light mine in a minute. All you children, get your glow sticks out. You can go ahead and crack them. Hard parents, help them. Shake them, crack them, and shake them. The ushers are going to light your candles. Make sure the person that is, uh, that is receiving the light, that you tilt it towards the light, the candle. I want you to remember something. Without a crib... There's no cross. Without swaddling clothes, you have no grave clothes. God wants you to know tonight, the light is in you. It's in you. Let's play something, Pam. John chapter 1. John 1, 6. Put that up on the board for me. There was a man. I want you to get this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now what we want to do, let's substitute, put your name in here. There was a man, a woman, sent from God Whose name was Stephen, was Kyle, was Hunter, was Kathy, was Rachel, was Jamie, was Betty, was Brian. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now look what it says here in the next verse. This man came for a witness for a testimony to bear testimony or witness of the light that all through him might believe through who? through John through John might believe because he come to bear witness of the light when people are encountering you are they encountering the light? what it says in the next verse he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light it's the light in you Jesus said this in John 9 verse 5 as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world when Jesus listen Jesus as long as I'm here I'm the only light but there's going to come a day when I'm going to get on the inside, come on, and I'm going to put my light on the inside, and everywhere you go, it won't just be me anymore. It is expedient that I go away, because if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost cannot come to you. But if I go away, I'll send him to you. He'll get on the inside of you, and he'll set a fire down in our soul that everywhere we go people can encounter the light the people that set it in darkness come on it's a neighbor it's the man that's sitting there holding his head saying I don't know what's going on with my life I hate myself it's the, it's, it's the person that the cancer is spreading they're sitting in darkness and you and I are the light Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 he said you are the light of the world a city set on a hill I'm leaving these words tonight church tonight I want to remind you that God saved you redeemed you and delivered you and he has filled you with the light of his word 
Don't be ashamed of what God has done in you. It's time for you to let the light in you shine so brightly that it can, that it can penetrate the darkness in someone else's life. The light you allow to shine from your life can give light to guide, other, guide others of the night. Guide them through the experiences that they're going through. It's time for you and I to stop putting ourselves down and start thanking God for the progress we've made. Then reach out to someone else so you can become a godly influence for others near you who are in need. They can be touched, changed, and even transformed by the light shining through you. Come on. Jesus said it. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light. He said, but you're called to be the light. I'm going to live in you. And you're going to radiate me. This Christmas, you're going to be around a lot of people. The next two days, you're going to be a lot around a lot of folks. Let your light shine. And just be conscious of carrying Jesus. Just be conscious. Come on, praise Him. Let's sing. Would you guys stand to your feet tonight?